Hallelujah. Come on, can we stand to our feet, Dominion City? Come on, can we stand to our feet and exalt our God? Hallelujah. Come on, lift up a shout of praise in this room. Come on, can we make a joyful noise unto the Lord? For he is great and greatly to be praised. So, Father, we exalt you now. We honor your name, God. Let you be high and lifted up in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, go ahead and lift up the Lord above your issues. Lift him up above your perspective. Lift him up above your entirety. Lift him up above your fears. For the Lord says that he will deliver you from all your fears. Hallelujah in this place. Glory to God. What I want you to do, I want you to look down your row and check with your row. Do a row check. And as you're looking down your row, I want you with your mouth, if your, the deliverance of your row is tied to your praise, how loud would your praise be? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say it one more time, for some of you didn't get it. If the deliverance of your row is tied to your praise, how loud will your praise be? If your brother's deliverance is tied to your praise, if your sister's deliverance is tied to your praise, hallelujah, glory to God. So go ahead, lift up your hands. God, we usher you in this place. We usher in the Savior. We usher in the rescue of our souls. Lord, we thank you that we have redemption through the blood of Jesus. And Lord, this Sunday will be a Sunday where you will redeem us from captivity. You will redeem us from sickness. You will redeem us from witchcraft. You will redeem us from pride. You will redeem us from rebellion. Let the redeeming power of God, let it cover this sanctuary. And we declare in Jesus' name, we mark our territory like lions in the spirit. And we declare that the territory of heaven covers this room. We declare in Jesus' name that pride cannot rest in this room. We declare in Jesus' name that division can't rest in this room. We declare in Jesus' name that no spirit of rebellion and stubbornness can rest in this room. So we say, Lord, take your seat. Sit down amongst us. We say, take your seat in our mind. Take your seat in our emotions. Take your seat in our finances. Take your seat in our health. Take your seat in our marriage. Take your seat in our household. Take your seat in this ministry. Take your seat in this city. We declare that Jesus is the ruler of our city. Jesus is the ruler of this service. Jesus is the ruler of our bodies. So in the name of Jesus, we declare we draw a bloodline in the realm of the spirit. Ooh, pray, come on, pray, come on, pray to me in city. Come on, let me hear the army of intercessors. Let me hear the prayer warriors warring. In the name of Jesus, we declare now the spirit of Jezebel be broken in this room. We declare now that the spirit of Korah be broken in this room. We declare now that every spirit of, that is a python and divination in this room, may it be broken. And we declare, may your word drop like a hammer in this room. May your word drop like a hammer. May it break things in us that need to be broken since childhood. May it break ideologies. May it break methodologies. May it break mentalities. So we may be conformed to the image of your son in the name of Jesus. Come on, let me hear you to be in city. Come on, pray, pray. Come on. Go ahead and pray in your heavenly language. Come on, Rebecca, turn up a little shakata. Come on, take 20 more seconds in war and prayer. Rebecca, Tika, turn up a little shakata. Let fire go down every row in this room. Let your glory begin to consume us. Let the consuming fire, let the combined of God make it rest in this place. In the name of Jesus, I declare you will not leave this place. The same. I declare the torment that you faced yesterday. You will not face 
today. The enemies that you see today, you will see no more in the name of Jesus. Now lift up a roar in this room. Travail from your belly, from your belly. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now this last shout, because I sense in the room there's a spirit of distraction that is trying to take your focus and mind because of what God is about to download that's going to shift the next three months of your life. And so what is about to be released today is about to shift the next quarter of your year. And the enemy wants to distract you so you don't come into alignment to what God is about to speak to you. So on the count of three, when we shout, every spirit of distraction that is trying to derail your focus, we declare it will be broken in the name of Jesus. So y'all ready to shout. And as you shout, may every wall of Jericho, may every distraction that's trying to come against what God is saying, may it be broken. One, Y'all ready? Two, three, lift up a sound right there. There it is. There goes the sound that ushers in miracles. There goes a sound that displays revival. Here comes the sound. escort them out. We don't babysit demons. We escort them out. Every spirit that's trying to ruin your miracle, may it be broken. trajectory of the next three months. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, amen. Hallelujah. Come on and raise up your praise right there. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus today. We come to celebrate the kingdom today. We come to lift him higher. So where's your sound in the room? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, we're going to bless the Lord this morning. With all that is within us, we're going to exalt his holy name. Come on and clap your hands.
shift the room. Shift where you're standing. Come on and shift. For he called for the worshipers. So we serve a great big God. Not a silent God. We serve a loud God. So he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 That's why we give him the highest praise in this place. That's why we lift him and magnify his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God is big, so strong and mighty. And his plan for me is victory, victory, victory. How many of you believe that? My God is big. He's so strong and he's mighty. And his plan for me is victory, victory, victory. And there's nothing my God cannot do. There's nothing my God cannot do. Do y'all believe that? There's nothing my God cannot do. Hey God, come on, lift it up right here. Say, my God is big, so strong and mighty. And his plan for me hey. is victory, victory, victory. My God, my God is big, is big so, strong, so strong, and mighty. And, mighty. and his plan for me, for me is victory. victory, hey. victory, victory. Hey. And that's nothing. 
A mechanic in a car shop, he comes alive. When you put a dentist around teeth, he comes alive. But when you put a worshiper in the house of the Lord amongst other believers, worshipers come alive when they're in the presence of the Lord. So do I have any worshipers that want to come alive? Let's open up your mouth and take 30 more about to come into divine arrival. And I just heard that as we were shouting and worshiping, God said, tell them it's on the way. It's on the way. It's on the way. And so we give our glory for it in the name of Jesus that what we're believing him for is not late but it's on the way. Amen. And so can we give him a shout of praise on the way to our seat? Come on, Dominion City. Woo! My, my, my. Amen. My, my, my. Praise the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord. There's such a glory in this room. And I'm telling you, I'm excited to receive all that God has for us. I'm excited. Can we take time to welcome all of our online guests that are watching online? <laughs> Hallelujah. You can, if you do me a favor, pull out that Apple or Android device. And if you will take time to go to the Mean City MS page and go to our live stream service and share uh, to help us get the word out of uh, Lord has favored Dominion City to reach people throughout the nation, Florida, Texas, and people in Louisiana, and all over the nation watches what takes place in this house from a week-to-week -week basis. And so we want to honor what God is doing by partnering with the Lord, by sharing, and helping us get the word out. Amen? 
Amen. And if we have any first-time guests in this room, I just want you to raise your hand or you can stand. Come on, there's one. Come on, three and six, two. Do we have any more first-time guests? All right, amen. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Come on, seven first-time guests. Can we celebrate them? Eight, nine. I'm sorry, I missed you. Wow, praise the Lord. Nine first-time guests. Can we celebrate that during the city? Amen. Amen. I truly want you to feel welcome. We truly believe that you're not here by accident, but by appointment. And the Lord would minister to you and give you what you need in this moment of time that will change the rest of your year. So we honor you for being in the house of the Lord. And I'm excited. That lets me know and I'm, I'm proud of our church and our media team because when you can get over four first-time visitors on a week-to-week -week basis, it lets us know that we're telling people about what Jesus is doing in the main city. Uh, the media team, the work that we're doing online, this is why we share. This is why we talk to people about your church and what God is doing. Because when we do that, look at God bringing in first-time guests who are coming to hear what the Lord is saying. And so we're blessed that God has favored our house to do that. And we want to be a friendly church. All right? It's the difference between being a friendly, not necessarily a friendly secret church, but a friendly church. A friendly church is people who know how to speak and love on those first-time guests if they come in. Amen. And just let them know that you appreciate them for being in the house of the Lord. Amen. And so we're excited about what our God is doing. Also, uh, if you're the first-time guest, you will take, you should have gotten from our greeters, there is a digital first-time guest card that you can fill out just to let us know a little bit of information about yourselves and so we can take time to reach out to you to let you know we appreciate you coming and being a part of our worship experience. Or you can uh, fill out the hard copy that we have or you can do it digitally by scanning the QR code and that will give you access to uh, our digital uh, first-time guest card that we would love for you to fill out. Amen. And we're excited about you being here on today. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And also, we want to thank God. I tell you, all that he's doing here at Dominion City Church. It has been a powerful weekend. It is Super Bowl Sunday here at Dominion City. Amen. And uh, I'm excited. Uh, we're not rushing the Holy Ghost. We're going to give the Holy Ghost room to speak and minister to do what he can. The hot wings and beanie weenies can wait. Praise the Lord. Uh, Rotel and all that good stuff can wait. Amen. And to we really take time to receive the spiritual, uh, spiritual meal that God has in place for us today. And I'm disappointed. I'm looking at the audience. I see some cowboy fans. I see. Uh, okay, three, four. Uh, I, I, all right. There's another. All right. Just, just after service. Praise the Lord. After service. Let's, let's come to the altar after service. We'll pray that you get delivered uh, from the <laughs> spirit. Amen. I look at the and I see all kinds of 49ers and Steelers and Amen. Broncos and all kinds of jerseys out here. Amen. And so we thank God. Uh, again, it's an awesome time to really be engaged with what the Lord is doing uh, as we're here to receive and then uh, get all that God has for us. And then we can go and uh, have fun and eat later. Amen. Amen. We thank you for being here, and we pray that you are open to receive all that God has in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Dominion City Church. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm Minister Deidre. And I'm Minister LaQuisha. And we are and here to Taylors, do your... And we are here to do your announcements this morning. <laughs> new membership classes for all new members is happening this month. If you are a new member and have not joined the class yet, please register 
at the lobby desk in the front in the front after service. We jumped a little ahead of ourselves, but we want to take the time to honor our leaders for everything that they do. Amen. Amen. <laughs> time I get a chance, I'm going to thank them, uh, really because it was a point in my life where I did not know where to go. Uh, and like pretty much of all of us, we know where we're supposed to be. I don't know where you're supposed to be, but I know where I'm supposed to be. I know I'm supposed to be in jail. I know that for a fact, but God raised up two individuals that spoke to something that I didn't see. class has begun and it was truly powerful this past Thursday. Part two of the discipleship class is happening this Thursday. Amen. Amen. Now this is one right here, y'all. Couples night last night. Where the couples at? Where the couples at? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They go biggie and faith heaven right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 It was truly an awesome time, y'all. I'm so glad that um, our leaders, they have a heart for marriage. They really do. And it was so much wisdom, so much wealth of knowledge in the room. And please don't be familiar with our leaders just because they're young, y'all. It is a lot of oil on that life. And if you draw from that, your marriage will never be the same. The impartation was just so um, unreal, and the apostle and prophetess talked about airplanes and aviation, and when you are in marriage or when you are just, you know, couples dating, once you decide to say I do, and you get on that airplane and the door shut, ain't no getting off. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So, just, just, that, that was something that I kept because no matter how many times I want to run from marriage, how many times I'm like, oh my God, you're getting on my nerves. I'm in the air. And I ain't putting on no parachute. Hey. So we're going to stay on this ride yeah. <laughs> until we reach our, reach our destination. Yeah. Amen. There will be no proper sign. <laughs> or laying hands in the house unless you have been authorized. Amen. Amen. Please respect our greeters and the instructions that they give us. We want to make sure that the order of service is going um, effectively. And in our house, we do have a saying um, of the spirit of excellence. So we want to make sure that in everything that we do, we are doing it in excellency. Okay? So just respect the greeters. There should be no children running around the building before or after service. They shall always be accompanied by their parent or adult. And we also want to refrain from eating or drinking in the sanctuary. We have a beautiful sanctuary and we want to keep it that way. Amen. Okay, we have upcoming dates on the 18th. We have baby dedication. If you are interested in having your baby dedicated to the Lord, please sign up in the lobby at the welcome desk after service and we want to make sure that we have as many baby, baby pictures as possible um, and it doesn't matter the age if your child has never been dedicated um, I guess from ages um, walking or I'm sorry born to 18 <laughs> you, can, you can sign up your baby if they've never been dedicated amen also uh, sound the alarm bells on that have been rescheduled that will be uh, given to you at a later date. And 
our eighth year church anniversary. Woo, 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 woo. It would be from April 5th through April 7th, and it would be a weekend filled with fun, fellowship, and the glory of the Lord. So please make arrangements to be there. These have been your morning announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Hi everyone, my name is Sister Fredricka from the media team and I want to share with you the amazing time we had Saturday night at our 90s sitcom themed event. We had a couple visitors, Carl and Harriet Winslow. We also had Cedric Jackie Robinson and LaVita Alizé Jenkins. Tonight was so important, they decided to visit us from outer space, the Coneheads. You heard of the Browns, well these are the Acoffs. Brown and Cora have decided to pay a visit to us. Next, on vacation from Hillman College, we had Dwayne and Whitley coming to see us. You heard of living single? No, we're living married. Overton and Sinclair. Next up, we had Martin and Gina. And as you can see, Martin is ready for the party. Lastly, we had our spiritual parents making the entrance as the same version of Biggie and Little Kim. Proverbs 27 and 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. It is so good to get together and have these moments. But you know we had to get into the games. And as you all can see, it was really stiff competition out there. But they were determined not to give up. But in the end, only one can win. And after stiff and tough deliberations, some walked away sad. It's okay, Apostle and Pastor T. We will get them next time. For the next game, couples listened very carefully for instructions. And as some of them were being carried over to the finish line, you had some that were just simply left behind. But after getting up and dusting off, they were victorious in their pursuit. Now we are on to the dance floor, and Cora and Brown are showing us how to get down. Okay, I see you, Mr. Robinson. I see you. All right, Phil and Vivian, you better show us how to one-two kick and step. And while some were cooling off from the dance floor, there was our apostle who was just getting started. Okay, I see you, apostle. One of the things that our leaders talked to us about was asking us a very vital question. What is your marriage made of? In the Bible, it talks about how God gave Noah instructions on building the ark and told him what specific wood to use and what would be strong enough to withstand what was coming. So what is your marriage made of? This was an awesome time of reflection and impartation and just being able to sit and receive and have a good time from our leaders. We thank God for them and giving us a vulnerable space to just remember what is important about marriage. In the words of our global prophet, Jesus Marriage Fund. Dominion City Church. It's giving time. My name is Brother Wayne. First, giving honor to God, who's the head of my life. Second, I want to honor my parents in their absence. I would like to also honor Apostle and Prophetess for their poor the anointing that falls down on us. Finally, I want to honor Brother Clinton. I want to Minister White and Minister Dietrich. We've been praying, and it's been helping me and pushing me to the next level. I just want to thank you for them, honor them. I want to honor them for their sacrifice in prayer. We have a culture here at DCC. We want to have a kingdom atmosphere. We lift each other up and push each other to the next level. I would like to challenge you, find your prayer partner. 
a prayer team so you can plow together. Someone that will hold you accountable, lift you up when you're down. It's all about the kingdom agenda and not our own agenda. I would like to share with you a scripture today, 2 Corinthians 9 and 7 of the New King James Version. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Each person should give according to the purpose in his own heart. Not the heart of your friend, not the heart of your mother, not anyone around you. It is your individual heart that you have to search and ask God to guide you on what you need to give. The heart is the center of your physical and your spiritual life. Spiritually, if your heart is not rooted in Christ, you will be spiritually not in the place God has called you to be. When we know our heart is in tune with God, everything we do will be out of love. And as that verse says, love is patience. That first thing is patience. We got to get that right, that patience. Love is patience. Love is patience. Spiritually, the heart is the place of your thoughts, your passions, your desires, your appetites, your affections, your purposes, and your endeavors. As that verse says, do not give grudgingly, which means reluctantly or angrily. We should give because we love God. Let me say that again. We should give because we love God. If we truly love someone, we would not have to probe and pry to give to them. For, for example, our spouse, our kids, our parents, or other family and friends. If you love them, you're going to give. You're going to give. Do not give out of necessity, which means to give out of duty, not out of love. We should really search our heart to be truly a joyful giver. It is, the, it is not the amount of God give, God looks at first. He looks at your heart first. For example, if your offer is only $10, but your heart is right and you honor God with that, he, God loves that. Because God owns it all. We just have to be good, good stewards of what he gives us. Don't be ashamed of what the amount of money that you give just is based on, like I said, the tithe and offering. Just offer it out of your heart. It's not the amount. I challenge you to pray and ask God to change your heart of what to give and just search after your heart of what to give today. Yes, Lord. share a sort of testimony of first fruit as the first part of the year uh, the new year day I gave a thousand dollar seed first fruit seed and that same week I got that thousand back just an example of just giving out of your heart and giving based on what you you got as God guides you to give <laughs> yes Lord as I pray over this offering I want to pray Psalms 95. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We honor you this morning. Yes, God. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great king above all gods. His hands are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, as in the day of trial in the wilderness, when your fathers tested me, they tried me, though they saw my work. For 40 years, I was grieved with that generation and said, it is the people who go astray in their hearts and they do not know my way. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. 
Lord, I just come to you as we pray, as I pray over this offering, Lord, that it be used for the equipping of the ministry, God, to save souls. We want to use this as the, as the kingdom agenda, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says you can't have, you can't serve two masters. You can't serve God and money. Lord, as we search our hearts, what are, what are we serving? Are we serving you? Or are we serving money? I declare and decree that we serve God only and not money. Lord, I pray as this, as we're going to the next glory to glory from faith to faith. been propelled to this apostolic vision of this house to go forth as we push to be led by you daily in Jesus name I pray amen now as the greeters come to the front if everybody please say it if you need an envelope the greeters will provide for it as, you, as I give you time to get your seed ready we have if you're giving options, cash, check, check, make your check out to your Union City Church. We got your cash app, cash tag DCCMS. Text to give, 1-855-916-6277. As we come around to your left, everybody come around.
Jesus right now in this moment. We lift you, Jesus. We lift you, Jesus. We lift you, Jesus. Your name is above every name. Your name is above all. Permit. 
petition I give you, oh God, uh, all of the things that I put before you today, Father, I ask that they be swallowed up in this atmosphere. If it's my intellect, uh, if it's my reasoning, uh, if it's my understanding, uh, Father, I just want your name to be first in my life. Uh, and when I ask for your name, uh, I'm asking for your power. When I ask for your name, uh, I'm asking for your dominion. When I ask for your name, I'm calling on your character. Father, take first place. There's been a lot of things in competition. There's been a lot of relationships in competition. There's been a lot of contracts in competition. There's been a lot of desires in competition. But today, the battle is over. Today, the competition is over. We make a conscious decision that Father, we slay our ambitions on the
I believe we're in an atmosphere. Come on, prophet is talking to you. I believe we're in an atmosphere wherever there is barrenness. When you break out and you begin to worship God, you begin to abide, you dwell. You're not looking for the next thing. You're not looking for an individual prophecy. You just, I just want to be where he is. I just want to dwell. Then what you'll start to see is there will be fruit that will start to bear in your life. And what I'm looking at in this room is I'm looking at God opening the door for the believer to bear much fruit. I don't know whose tree been bearing. And there's not been much growing. There's not been much produced. But I'm not talking about cars and clothes and houses and jobs. I'm talking about there's some people in this room that's been stagnant in their growth with God. There's some people in this room, y'all not going to be honest. My character hasn't lined up with God. Worry has been bigger than my worship. There's been some things that have been bigger than the name of Jesus. But I see trees rising up, and not just trees, but I see fruit on those trees. Your weakness is about to bear fruit. Your worship is about to bear fruit. All this running and shouting is about to bear fruit. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that you will not be a fruitless believer. Because you're not a believer if you don't bear fruit. If there's no fruit, nothing sets you apart. Father, I thank you right now that Dominion City Church will be full of trees with fruit. This will be the fruit of the Spirit. Can you say love? Can you say peace? Can you say gentleness? Can you say self-control? I believe there's a fruit of holiness about to be rectified in this place. I decree and I declare that your appetite for the world. Y'all don't want to pray because you know you're going to have to give up something. Your appetite to be seen. Your appetite to be noticed. Your appetite to be religious. Your appetite to be loved by people. I decree in this atmosphere a consuming fire is coming for the appetites. I declare that the Lord is about to cleanse your spiritual talent. And what you used to crave, you're not going to crave anymore. What you used to desire it's not going to be appealing to you anymore. I declare in Jesus' name that you're about to get selective in what you like to engage in. You're about to get selective in what you like to talk about. You're about to get selective in the people you hang around. I feel the Holy Ghost. When I come to the house of the Lord, I come for surgery. I don't need you to flatter me. I don't need you to allow me to die. I don't want you to put me on hospice prophetess. Jesus, I'm not in idolatry to a man or a woman. As 
long as the Holy Ghost comes into the room, I want to have surgery today. I'm in pre-op right now. I'm getting ready to get the word. And the word is going to cut me. The word is going to change me. The word is going to deliver me. And then I'm going into recovery. And when I come out from recovery, I'm not going to have the tumors I lose to have. I'm not going to have the desires I used to have. I'm not going to And although I was having a wonderful time, I was getting slapped upside the head and woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning because I had to preach. And the Holy Ghost kept bothering me about your word. And he told me, if you're going to be a prophet, your vacation can't be more important than the souls of men. So although I wanted to sleep, although I was watching apostles sleep, I, I realized that the Holy Ghost was challenging me, saying, saying are you really about this? Or, when, or is it just when it's convenient for you? And so the Holy Ghost was talking to me. He said, tell the people when they sit in the purple chairs, this, this is not the time for you to sit back and relax. This is when you enter into a battle. And today is one of those Sundays where you're going to enter into a battle. It's a very simple word. Nothing fancy. All about the posture of your heart. And so when you sit there today, you're going to realize that you're going to be in a battle to give up some hard things. This is not a battle. This is not a sermon about sexual soul ties alone. So for all of us who've been saved and ain't in no kind of sexual sin, you might as well check back in. This word ain't gonna go over nobody's head. Amen. It's a very stern, prophetic word, but it's gonna bless your life, okay? I want you to put your boxing gloves on and I want you to fight for your freedom and your deliverance. Amen. Let's take a moment to honor the man of God. We humbly submit ourselves, amen, to the will of God. Praise the Lord. So grateful for Apostle. Um, I was sitting over there, and I guess he could just tell that I was, you know, your spouse knows you, and he could tell I was, I was a little burdened, and um, he whispered in my ear, you preach, and don't you let their faces bother you. <laughs> Now he don't know what I'm preaching, but
but he now he's been married to a prophet for 12 years almost, so he, he kind of know what it's like when you're carrying a prophetic burden. Don't you let their faces bother you. So, yeah. so my husband told me, don't let their faces bother me. Amen. Amen. I appreciate the encouragement. Amen, Pastor, and I love you. Um, I'm not going to start from a, a scripture, but I'm going to give you some scripture, okay? I'm not going to start from a scripture. I've already prayed. Amen. I'm going to give you my sermon title, and then we're going to go straight into the word. Amen. I'm going to give you scripture, though. Is that all right with y'all? That I don't start with a scripture. I'm going to start with the scriptures, but it's not going to be a specific scripture. Amen. All right. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. They got me up here at 1153. <clears throat> what time does Super Bowl start? Six o'clock? Who said that's all right? She don't watch football. Girl, you ain't finna get me beat up. You gonna help me fight out the church. She like, that's all right. Some of the men like, oh, speak for yourself. Y'all leave sister, sister Samantha alone. She told me to preach as long as I want to, and she'll yell then here, so I'm gonna do what she tell me to do. Amen. No, I'm just playing. I'm gonna get the word on now, but I don't want us to rush the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I'll get you out in time and for you to go um, cook and do the things that you um, have planned for today. My sermon title for today is Crucify Your Fantasies. Amen. I, you know you got to talk to your neighbor. For those of you introverts, I apologize in advance. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, crucify your fantasies. Hallelujah. I want to talk from the scriptures of Judges uh, 14, 15, and 16. And if you know anything about the book of Judges, it talks about Samuel, okay? It talks about, excuse me, Samson, all right? And we know, some of us know the story of Samson and Delilah, and this is all going to make sense in a minute. And so it's a lot of scriptures, so I didn't want to read them out, but I want to give you the backstory of Samson's life. Samson was consecrated to the Lord before birth, amen? Meaning that before birth, he was already dedicated to the Lord. The Lord had already picked out, the Lord had already chosen what he wanted Samson to do. Now, just like he did it for Samson and Jesus and David and the prophet Jeremiah, the Lord has also done the same for you. He has already pre-orchestrated why he put you in the earth realm. And it doesn't matter all of the different things that I do in between the time I'm born and the time that I die. None of those things matter unless I have tapped into and been devoted to the thing that I was born for. The two most important days of your life is the day that you're born and the day that you die. The day that you're born, you're born with a purpose. You're born, and that purpose will always bring glory to God. Prophetess, how do I know if I'm walking in my purpose? What you're doing brings glory to God, and it advances his agenda in the earth realm. The day that you die is important because the Bible says that after a man dies, next is appointed the judgment. So when you die, you go straight to judgment. You stand before a righteous judge. You don't stand before him as father. You go straight to God as judge and he's going to judge whether you did what he told you to do. So the two most important days of your life in this mortal body is the day that you die and the day that you are born. Now here we have Samson whom he was born and God gave the instructions about his life to his mother and father. Because sometimes God will give you an assignment, but he'll give another man the instructions. That, that, that not every time that God asks you to do something, that he's going to always give you the instructions. He's not always going to tell you. And in order for you to be successful in your walk with God, in order for you to be successful in your purpose, you're going to have to learn to listen because somebody else may have the instructions to your assignment. And so the Bible says that his parents, they went down the line of his consecration. To be consecrated is when God gives you specific morals that are within the confines of the word of God. Specific morals, specific assignments, and then he also gives you specific boundaries. 
So although we all have the same Bible and we follow the Ten Commandments and we follow what the Bible says about holiness, according to your strengths and weaknesses, we all have different boundaries. We all have different consecration. There are some things that you may be able to do that God says I can't do. Y'all didn't come to have no church this morning. There are some things that God may allow you to do in one season that he will tell you in the next season you can't do. There may be a season of your life, Tamara, where the Lord says this month, I want you to fast every day for five days from six to six. And then next month, you can eat whatever you want to eat. And the reason that so many believers are struggling is because we're saying, God, give me the game plan and don't ever change it again. Give me the game plan. Give me the the successful keys to blessings and don't change it again. But if God is going to continually transform you, if God is going to continually bless you, if he's going to continually take you higher, then there are going to be times in your life that he will change your consecration. For some of you, the Lord may say, you can't hang with a big crowd of people. You don't need no more than about four friends because once you get around the eight mark, you start getting mad at people and you're ready to fight. And so the Lord may tell you, having a lot of friends is not good for you. But your neighbor may be the most friendly person in the room and they're not easily offended and they don't take everything to heart and they're not easily irritated and they know how to text people back. And so they may be able to have a group of friends that you can't have. He gave Samson consecration. He said, you can't cut your hair. Your consecration is not just dependent upon the season you're in. Your consecration is dependent upon your gift. Some of you, although you're not operating in your gift, there's just some things that don't sit well with you. You, you, You're having a hard time understanding yourself because what we should be doing is understanding the purpose and not trying to understand the person. See, the person of who you are has already been trained by carnality. It's already been trained by your trauma. It's already been trained by your parents. But what you need to start trying to understand is your purpose. When you learn to understand your purpose, you understand the person. You're confused. Because I'm trying to understand a person that has already been afflicted by pain. I'm trying to understand a person that's already been afflicted by trauma. And so Samson had this consecration. And the Lord says he had a gift. And this gift was that he was an enemy to the enemies of Israel. God raised him up to fight the Philistines. Some of you are frustrated because when you are a prophet, there are going to be certain things that you do. There will be certain things that other people may be able to say and do that are comfortable for them and it may not be comfortable for you. Some of you, the reason why you don't want to listen to certain conversations is because you want to make sure that the Holy Ghost tell you. So you don't want people telling you all their business. A true prophet don't want to know everybody's business. Why? Because I have the ability to hear from the Holy Ghost. You ain't got to tell me nothing. I only want to know what the Holy Ghost going to tell me. Some of you are prophetic. And so being prophetic means that you got to be able to learn how to not be a people pleaser. Because one thing about being prophetic is that people are going to always misinterpret your boldness and they're going to misinterpret your directness for meanness. Of course I'm a prophet. I'm a prophet. Of course you think I'm mean. When I'm just direct and I'm going to say what everybody else is scared to say. Of course you think I'm mean when you want to live the lie. Of course you think I'm doing too much when you want to die in your sin. When you are a pastor and you have a pastoral grace, you will walk in this room and you will know. You will say, I had not seen Brittany in a long time. Because people with a pastoral grace, they notice people. 
They notice when people are outside of the fold, not just a senior leader. You're the person that you know when somebody is missing. You're the person that you ain't the type of person. You ain't got to call me when I'm sick when you're a pastor. When you got a pastor's grace, you don't be looking for nothing in return. But everybody you don't see, you'll call. Co-worker missing from work. Girl, let me call Sheila. I, Sheila, eat lunch with her. I wonder if she's sick today. And you're never looking for anything in return. Because it's very vital that you understand your purpose. When you understand your purpose and why you're wired the way you're wired, you won't fight against why God says you can't have what you want to have. So, as I'm moving on, because I don't want to get stuck there, the Lord said, tell the people to crucify your fantasies. Satan uses connections to draw us away from God. So, God has an agenda to tie you to certain things. He will tie you to a church. He will tie you to a leader. He ties you to your spouse. He ties you to your friend. God, friends, God even ties you to certain careers. And your career, guess what, is always going to complement your calling. If you're in a career, because you can't tell me, y'all didn't come to have no church. I feel the Holy Ghost. You can't tell me God called you to be an apostle and you're trying to rap and sell dope on the side. Your career don't complement your calling. You can't tell me God called you to be an evangelist and you at the bar slanging drinks for a living. That don't compliment your calling. <laughs> Fantasies. This is the faculty of the activity of imagining things. Listen. A fantasy is the activity of imagining things, especially things that are impossible for you, remember, just for you, or inappropriate or out of God's will. God connects you to certain things, certain ideas. He will, he will plant things into your heart. Listen, God speaks to your heart. He does not speak to your mind first. He knows the heart. He speaks to the heart. Listen, the Bible says that guard your heart above all else, for out of it flows the issues of what? Life. If God going to talk to you and your issues of your life flows out of your heart, you got to understand how vital your heart is. Listen, I'm going to work this in a minute if y'all hang in here. Don't get ADHD on me, okay? Hang in there. Fantasies are imaginations. These are things that are planted in your head. Fantasies can grow because of a TV show that you watch. Y'all ain't come to hell, church. Fantasies can grow because of somebody you see on social media. Fantasies are planted in your head because you saw something work for somebody else that you think gonna work for you. And so the problem with fantasies is that sometimes the fantasies are good. Sometimes the fantasies are harmless for somebody else, but they are harmful for you. I got a fantasy. I, I really want to move to Timbuktu. But did God plant that in your heart or are you fantasizing because you're rejected by people in your community? Did God tell you? Did God plant in your heart? Or did you get mad because you say, I can't find no job around here? Fantasies are imaginations. They are creative thoughts where we sit and we think about things over and over again. When you have not crucified your fantasies, you will meet a woman in the first day. You already think that y'all are going to get married. One of the things that television, tell a vision, was designed to do is it was designed to teach you how to think. And so what television does is as we raise our children and they watch television, as we raise, have been raised ourselves and we watch television, what it does is it puts a picture in front of you so that it tells you, it conditions you on how to think. How to think about family. How to think about a culture. How to think about a specific race. 
How to think about church. Do you find it ironic that every show that they put out in our race and in our community, that if it's about church, it always that have to include adultery. It always has to be a crooked pre Y'all didn't come to hell. Church. I don't watch that mess. I don't watch Green Leaf because it is not a direct representation of what my Bible says. And there are millions of people watching it thinking that's what church is supposed to be like. Oh, I feel my help because somebody don't like what I'm saying. But I came to make a declaration today. The TV ain't going to tell me how to think about the body of Christ. You ought to throw your head back and give the Lord a real big praise. Now, now I'm not telling you that you can't watch what you want. Watch what you want to watch. I'm telling you to be aware of the agenda and the imagination. I don't watch it because that's my choice. But you got to know what your consecration is. And you got to be aware of the agenda. One of the ways that we have, we have started, imagination are spiritual, imaginations are spiritual inventions. They are spiritual speculations, okay? This is when you get an ideal in your mind that you just can't let go. And so you work your entire life trying to make this imagination come to pass. How many times have we been in relationships? And these relationships are not ordained by God. But because I got an imagination, I got a fantasy in my head about this boy. I got a fantasy in my head about this girl. And I'm going to make that fantasy work at all costs because I've imagined it. I've already told my friends, girl, he the one. I already changed her name in my phone to wifey. And so because I got an imagination, I'm willing to do whatever to make it happen. It's called witchcraft. I'm trying to manipulate manipulate the hand of God to get something he didn't ordain for my life. You ought to tap your neighbor and say, neighbor, deal with your imagination. Second Corinthians 10, 3 through 6. Second Corinthians 10, 3 through 6. Look what it says. It says we are human, but we do not wage war as humans do. It says, we use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down strongholds of human reasoning. Okay, these are imaginations. Strongholds of, is it saying godly reasoning? No, human reasoning. And to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. This means that your human reasoning can become proud and puffed up and get in the way of God. Now, the Bible tells us to cast down every imagination. This means that you cannot entertain every thought that comes in your mind. This goes for the people you mad at. Can I be honest with y'all? Some of y'all are mad at people right now and your anger against them is a fantasy. Psychotic. Think about it. How powerful the mind is. When I say psychotic, I'm not saying it in a derogatory. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about psychologically and what being psychotic is. We've made it a term, a derogatory term, but if you think about what it means, some of us have fantasies. Fantasies are not just good things. You're angry at people and it's not evidence, it's actually an imagination in your mind of what you think happened, not what really happened. There are people that are mad at you because they are mad about something that didn't really happen. It's an imagination. It's a what? An imagination. Now, as we look at this, deficiencies build fantasies. Wherever you are deficient in your life or you feel deficient, if you feel like you don't make enough money, 
you will find that you will get, you'll start fantasizing about being a millionaire. And you'll start fantasizing about where you want your job to be. And you'll start fantasizing about how much money you're going to make. And you'll be determined. Because when there's a deficiency in your life and it's unchecked, you've not been like Paul. You've not decided that you're going to be content with the amount of money that God has given you. You've yet to be grateful for the job you have. And so what I'm doing is I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking because there's a deficiency in my life. And so now I have imagined and fantasized about a certain number. And so then it leads me into a fantasy. Where there are deficiencies, here comes fantasies. I'm not, I'm not where I want to be spiritually. And so because I'm not where I want to be spiritually, I learned to pretend that I am there. And the danger about fantasies is that most people are living in a fantasy about their spiritual walk. Most people don't believe that they're going to be judged about how that most people in the church don't believe. Most people live in that fantasy. God don't care. God ain't concerned about what I'm doing. God ain't worried about the fact that I'm, 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 I'm being fake. It's a fantasy. Fantasies are dangerous because fantasies take you out of reality. It takes me out of reality. Now, here we have fantasies that can be planted by satanic agents. The enemy is going to try to plant seeds in your mind. If you're going to do anything in the next three months to advance in the kingdom of God, advance and excel in any area of your life, you watch what you allow the enemy to plant in your mind about yourself about your future, about your church, about your God, about your friends, about your husband, about your spouse, about your job. You watch what he tries to plant in your mind. Because when he can't move your feet, he will try to contaminate your thoughts. When he can't move your heart, he will try to contaminate your way of you thinking. And so you got to learn how to wage war against the enemy of your mind. You got to learn how to say, I'm not thinking about that. That is not in God's will for my life. I don't know where that thought came from but I cast it down in the name of Jesus all of you who say the enemy has been playing with your mind you see images and pictures when you close your eyes you better rebuke that devil in the name of Jesus and every demonic thought that comes in your mind thoughts of you dying sexual thoughts thoughts of the enemy demons that you see you better cast it down by the power of the blood of Jesus you better tell that devil you're not going to play tricks on my mind my mind belongs to the Lord you're not going to plant things in my mind my mind belongs to the Lord you're not going to have me thinking things outside of the will of God my mind belongs to the Lord tap three people and tell them my mind be obedient now tell them my mind belongs to the Lord my mind belongs to the Lord Come on, we bind up Alzheimer's in the name. I believe Alzheimer's. I believe it's a result of many years of your mind being under attack. I bind it up for your mother. I bind it up for your grandmother. I declare that mental illness will not be the portion of the believer. You're not going to grow old and lose your mind. We come against the mission in the name of Jesus. And we tell every devil that's been after the minds of the believers. We tell them to flee in the name of Jesus. Come on, give them praise. It comes up a high. Now, now, Samson was consecrated. He couldn't drink wine. He couldn't. There was. He wasn't supposed to be marrying women who were from um, the Philistines. He wasn't supposed to be intermarrying. Okay, he was not. He was supposed to, and let me tell you why God, I'm going to tell you why God did this. He was not supposed to be intermarrying. He wasn't supposed to marry a Philistine woman. Listen to me. This, this was not about race. This was about being equally yoked. The reason why he couldn't marry a Philistine woman is because that meant they would serve two different gods. It doesn't matter who you marry as long as y'all worship the same God. And so the Lord was like, you can't drink wine, you can't cut your hair, you're not supposed to marry this person. He gave him all these stipulations. Well, Samson came under attack. 
He found himself sneaking across the ditch at midnight going to sleep with Delilah. And Delilah was after his strength and his gift and his anointing and his assignment. I want y'all to hear me. Those of you who think that being in sexual sin, I don't care if it's somebody you committed to. I don't care how long you've been together. I don't care what your excuse is. I wasn't taught. You're hearing it today. When you are in sexual sin, you are opening up your body to demons. When sexual sin, listen, what is sexual perversion? Sexual perversion is when we veer off God's original plan for sexual intimacy. God only has one stipulation about sex. And it's supposed to be between a man and a woman within the confines of marriage. Now listen. Listen. Samson, we focus so much on him sleeping with Delilah that we don't get down to what led him to sleeping with Delilah. Listen, Samson goes across the ditch at midnight. Now, midnight tells me that he knew he was wrong. Because why are you doing it at night and can't nobody see you? If this was a relationship, y'all, I'm finna work up in here. I feel the Holy Ghost. If it's God, why you gotta hide? If it's God, why you gotta wait nine months for him to go public? If it's God, why you still asking her to post y'all pictures? If it's God, why you gotta pack a bag, or overnight bag? I'm not supposed to be sleeping with nobody that I'm not married to. They don't preach this gospel no more. They don't preach this kind of gospel no more. Ooh, I feel my help. I ain't gonna stay there long. We're gonna talk about that another son. Don't miss. If this series is eight series long, if you came today, you have been inducted into being your all eight series. You need to hear every last bit of it. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, y'all. You gonna make it. He was hiding. A lot of times when it's a fantasy, we hide it from our accountability. We go and make decisions and our accountability don't know about it. We take on opportunities. We do things and we hide it from our accountability. He went to his parents about the first woman he married. They did not agree with it. Why? Because God gave them the instructions. If God gives a leader or your parents or whoever instructions or whoever your mentors instructions, then they also are now liable for your accountability. Right? Right? And so what he did was they told him, they was like, we don't agree with you marrying this woman. The first woman that he married got him caught up. She betrayed him. She enticed him and then she betrayed him. Then he sleeps with a prostitute at the beginning of Judges 16 and then ends up with Delilah who was not his wife. So a lot of times in the church, we teach sexual sin, women be celibate, women be celibate. Well, we're not teaching about these men who sit up in church and squint at every woman they see and flirt with every woman they see. Celibacy is not just for women. Y'all didn't come to have church. If you ain't got a ring on your finger as a man, you ain't got no business sleeping around either because the Bible says it. So we got a bunch of celibate women with church men that's hopping around everywhere they want to be. And now you've been celibate and you married somebody that's been running around. And now you got to help them get delivered after you've been married. Celibacy is for everybody that don't have a ring. So we teaching one-sided. And every time Samson laid down with Delilah, he lost a part of his anointing. Every time he laid down with her, he lost his strength. He lost his clarity. He got confused. He got weaker and weaker and weaker against the things of God. And so most of the time, we think that we can participate in certain things and it's not going to affect our relationship with God. But the more you lay, the more you lose. The more you lay, the more you lose. You lose your integrity. You lose your worship. You lose your dignity. You lose your values. And you gain demons. So he lost his purity he lost his humility he stopped listening to his parents he lost his honesty because now he has to hide and lie 
When we fall into these type of situations, it's not just the situation. You become a liar. You become dishonest. You lose your humility. You got to walk in practice. You don't want nobody to tell you that you're wrong. So you got to act like you're right. You walk in pride. Because don't correct me about this. Don't say nothing to me about this. Don't, don't, so we can discuss everything else, but leave my relationship out of it. This is what we do to our friends. When the Bible says iron sharpens iron. And so sometimes God will put your friends in your life because they know you deserve better. They know you out of order with God. And so we get mad at our friends and call them self-righteous when they're not self-righteous. They're trying to keep you out of hell. They're trying to keep you from crying and talking about the same thing over and over again. They're trying to help you remain delivered. So we get mad at our friends. We get mad with them. We lie. We say, oh, I'm not messing with her. Oh, I'm not going to go there. Oh, I'm not going to take that job. Oh, I'm not planning on moving. Oh, I'm not going to do that. We'll lie, and then we'll surprise our accountability with our decision. So the Bible says he lost his honesty, his consecration. James 3, 13 through 16. I'm almost done. It says that if you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with humility that comes from wisdom. Humility comes from wisdom. Keep going. But if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover it up with the truth. With the truth, with boasting and lying. Okay? So there's a such thing as selfish ambition. So we just start teaching about sexual sin. And I'm, look, I'm not against, I don't, it's probably been a year since I really talked about sexual sin. Like I said, this is not a sermon about sexual sin. I'm mentioning it, but I don't want to get caught up on it. We'll teach about sobriety and alcoholism and we'll teach about all of these things. But one of the things that we have not been properly taught about is selfish ambition. Selfish ambition. When, when I am ambitious to please myself. I am ambitious to walk out the things that I want to walk out. When I am ambitious to do what I want to do instead of what God has ordained me to do. And so selfish ambition comes in. And when we have repetitive, unchecked strongholds, they eventually start to produce fruit in your life. So if you are having selfish ambition in your life, you will start to see the fruit of selfish ambition. You will start to see that everything will become about you and how you look to people. You will start to feel like you're nothing unless people are paying attention to you. You will start to even manipulate miracles. And you will manipulate things so that you can get an answer from God. This happened in scripture, but the Bible tells us... Um, I think it was 1 Kings 11 and 4. I want to show you this because there are times where we are asking questions. You know, is this sin? Is this sin? Is this sin? And sometimes you got to ask yourself, not just if it's sin, but is this a seed that leads me to sin? The next time you get in a situation where the enemy is trying to steal your anointing, you got to ask yourself, this may not be sin, but is this a seed that leads me to sin? Y'all didn't come to have no church. 1 Kings 11 and 4 tells us that here is Solomon, the wisest man in the world. And for it was so when Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart after other gods. And his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God as was the heart of his father David. So basically what happens is Solomon being wise, who he was connected to turn his heart from God. Who are you connected to right now that can turn your heart from God? What are you connected to right now that can turn your heart from God? Is it a job? Is it money? Is it people? Is it friends? Is it religion? What is connected to your life that is trying to turn your heart from God? Is it a thought, a fantasy, an imagination? Is it a title and a pursuit out of, outside of God's time? Because let me tell you something. If you get a harvest out of season, it is not a blessing, it's a curse. 
that there are some times that God has it for us, but because we are so anxious to get it, I'm not willing to wait on God. I'm trying to receive a harvest. So I manipulate a heart. I pick up bananas off the tree and they still green. I don't want a green banana. I want a ripe banana. I want a banana that's ready to eat. And so many of us are testifying about blessings that are not blessings. They are green bananas. It is not the season for it. And because I wanted it so bad, I forced the marriage. I forced the opportunity. Opportunity. I forced the contract. I forced the job. I forced the business. But I declare in Jesus' name that the believers are going to get in the will of God. If I'm going to get my harvest, I don't want it until it's ready. Because a harvest out of season is still a curse. It is so in the name of Jesus. I don't want a marriage out of season. I don't want the six figures if it's out of season. I don't want the, 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 the friendships if it's out of the season. You got to be mindful of when is the season of your harvest. Now, I want you to be fortified. So there are going to be times where your fantasies are going to tell you to fast and pray. There are going to be times where your fantasy, you don't have to fast and pray about a fantasy. Because it's not God anyway. The Lord rebuked the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Because they were using fasting to manipulate the hand of God. I'm coming up in here because they didn't got quiet. Let me tell you, it says, it says, it says there will be times where you want it so bad. You will start acting like the new agers. You will start saying, give me a sign, Lord. If this you, God, give me, thinking, then let the stop sign turn purple. And the thing about you asking God for a sign is my Bible say we don't ask God for a sign. My Bible say in Matthew 16 and 4, I feel like preaching in here today. My Bible tell me that a wicked and an adulterous generation asks God for a sign. A sign is a new age principle. God don't send no signs. Signs follow me. God don't send no signs. He don't send a prophet. God don't send no signs. You got the Holy Ghost. You know what the Holy Ghost is saying. You don't need a sign when you got the Holy Ghost. What did the Holy Ghost say? Now they come to have church. I feel the Holy Ghost. We don't ask for a sign. Because here's the thing about the sign. When you ask for a sign, the devil going to give you a sign. He going to give you a sign. Do you know how many people I've counseled with in relationships that are not of God? I'm going to go on a fast. Fast. Hear God on the fast, say no, and then ask God for a sign. The devil give them a sign. And they still end up embarrassed. Because there is nowhere in scripture where God uses signs in the New Testament. The Bible said these signs shall follow thee. The signs that we operate in as Christians are, are casting out devils. Speaking in new tongues. I want to help you because I don't want anybody to get in trouble and your destiny be off track because we've not been taught this. I want you to see the scripture. A wicked and adulterous generation seeks a sign because sometimes we're seeking a sign to avoid being obedient. How many times did God tell Jonah to go to Nineveh? One time. Don't seek a sign because the enemy might give it to you. You don't need a sign. You need to be planted in the word of God so that if God gives you a dream, if God sends a prophet, if God sends you a word to your gut, that you can obey God. Your children's lives depend on you being able to hear the voice of God. Your spouse's life depends on you being able to say, I don't need a sign. I know that this does not line up with God's will for my life. I know that I'm being ambitious. I know that something is driving me and it's not the Holy Ghost. I know that something is telling me to rush and rush so that I can put a picture out on social media. Something is saying, go before your process. Something is saying, to the, and you know that's not the voice of God. But because of my fantasy, I'm trying to manipulate my miracle. So you don't ever want to do this. I had to learn this early on. Now listen to this. 
We don't look for signs. We look for the fruit of it being in the will of God. Look for the fruit. Look for the fruit when you take a job. Look for a fruit when you start the business. Look for the fruit. Even when you're dating, look for the fruit. If I'm begging you to take me out on a date, don't worry about it, partner. Just don't even worry about it. Tell them, look, look, if I'm studying asking you about a date, just don't even worry about it. You go get your hair done, you go get your nails done, you go get you some new jeans and a new shirt, and you wait on the next person that might be your husband. But you is not begging nobody to take you out on no date. To, to be in the will of God in such a way where you're looking at the fruit. Does the fruit line up with the word of God? Are you producing the fruit of your gift? Are you producing the fruit of the value on your life? Does it line up? You cannot, you cannot look at, there are so many false prophets, false believers, false people. And so what God is wanting us to do, he, he, he doesn't want you to be embarrassed. I sense in the room that many of us are tired of being embarrassed. Tired of saying this was God. Tired of having to take the detours and get off on the wrong exit. And now I got to go all the back way around and get back on the right track. And now I got to explain to people why I got this car when I should have had this car. And why I got to explain to people why we broke up. And I thought you said this was the one. And what happened to your ring? And I thought y'all was going to move. And what, why I'm moving back home when I said God told me to move to Alabama. Like, I know you tired of being embarrassed. And one of the ways that you cancel out and Embarrassment is you learn how to judge things by fruit. Don't look at their faces, look at their fruit. What is the fruit producing? Does it line up with where I'm going? Does it line up with who I want to be? Does it line up with what I want in life? Does it line up with the word of God? I'm looking at fruit. Is it patient? Is it loving? Does it tell the truth? Does it, is it not prideful? Is it boasting? What are you seeing in the fruit of what you're connected to? And does it complement my calling? Does it complement my calling? Is it too heavy on one side and not heavy enough on the other side? What is it that the enemy has tied me to that I've ignored that maybe the fruit is not the will of God for me? Maybe perfect fit for you, but it doesn't line up for me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. You, deserve the best. you deserve the best. Now, that didn't sink in for a lot of people because many of us don't think we deserve any better. But when you are having to be hard on yourself, when you're having to say, I can't spend this and I can't do what the other girls do and what the other women do and what the other men do, you, what you're basically saying is, I deserve the best. And the best is not going to take me away from God. The best is not going to make me feel insecure. The best is not going to make me give up my calling in order to do it. The best is what I deserve. I want you to tell your neighbor again because your neighbor didn't hear you. I want you to prophesy to your neighbor say neighbor the best is yet to come say neighbor you deserve the best and even if you be by yourself and even if you don't get the job you want and even if you're not in the relationship you want to be in, and in the city you want to be in I can be the best all by myself because I know the harvest is coming I plan it too much I can be the best all by myself I can keep myself company and hang with myself I got a real good thing going on and so even if I don't have the harvest right now I heard apostles say the harvest is coming I sold too long I sold too much worship I sold too much giving I sold in faithfulness and I don't have to manipulate anything the harvest is coming is coming the harvest is coming the harvest is coming I don't know how long you've been waiting but the harvest is coming let me finish one more point when you have unchecked fantasies you become like a puppet on a string 
The fantasy is control. Everybody sees you in the moves and decisions, but they don't know that something else is controlling you. Don't you let anything control you that's not the Holy Spirit. What people think of you, don't let it control you. You're not going to be, because what they think, because one day you'll be happy and the next moment you're sad because of what they think. Don't you let shade on Facebook. Imagine throwing shade at me and I already unfollowed you. Imagine throwing shade at me. Look, I got the Holy Ghost. Imagine throwing shade and I don't even know you exist. Y'all ain't come to hell, child. I'm going to get in trouble. Imagine lying and telling everybody that I'm one thing and I'm not and checking my page and still see that the Lord taking me to the nation. Imagine lying on our church and having to go on Facebook and still seeing all the seats filled. Y'all ain't come to have church. Don't you let people control you. Don't you let what people say control you. Don't you be a puppet on a string. What they feel don't matter. What they say don't bother me. What they do should not control you. You can't let the day-to-day -day troubles control you. When you get your bills, because you have a fantasy of having this amount of money, we all got bills. You, you are puffing on the string. You get the bills, your whole mood is changing. This is how you know you're under the control. So until you learn to be content with what you got, you will never see God bless. You will find yourself taking opportunities that's not God's will because God is trying to get you content. He's not trying to give you another opportunity. So you don't want to be under the control of anything. You can't be a puppet on the string in this season. Some of you are making a decision right now. I've been under control too long. I dress the way they want me to dress. I talk how people want me to talk. I'm not loud about my relationship with God because I'm scared of what people are going to say. You didn't write the book because you're scared. You hadn't recorded the CDs because you're scared. You didn't post the stat because you're scared. You had not started the business because you're scared. But we come against every fantasy that causes you to people please. And I declare in Jesus' name that we're walking out of fantasies today. I want to be in the will of God. I give you my fantasies. I give you my imaginations. I give you my desires. I give you my ambitions. And I walk out of ambition today. And I'm walking in the will of God. I want to be in the will of God. I want to be in His will. All right. Last thing. Hold on. Last thing, Walter. You're doing great. I want you to be aware of familiar spirits. And I'm, I'm getting out of here. We saw Samson marry a woman that God told him not to marry. We saw him sleep with a prostitute. And then we saw him get with Delilah. Familiar spirits are spirits that, look at the root word, family spirits. Okay? They are family spirits. And this is what a lot of y'all fight. Some of you, if you have been struggling with advancement, you feel like you cannot advance you may be dealing with a familiar spirit. If you are struggling with get, always getting to one point and then feeling like there is a wall that keeps you from breaking through in your walk with God, in your money, in your career, you can't go manipulate the miracle. You got to deal with the familiar spirit. Now, familiar spirits are family spirits, but they're not just spirits that come out of your family bloodline. Familiar spirit studies your father's side of the family all the way back to 10 generations. Look it up in the Greek, in the Hebrew. Familiar spirits, they are spirits, they are satanic agents. They are invisible unless they are inside of a body or they manipulate objects. We know that demons are real. Demons are very intelligent. Very intelligent. They have the ability to study every person on your father's side of the family all the way back to 10 generations. And what they do is they study the patterns of the people on your father's side of the family. And they realize that if it happened in the 10th generation to this person, in the 9th generation to this person, in the 8th generation to this person, in the 7th generation, then by the time I get to the person that I'm trying to destroy, I know that all I have to do is tempt her or tempt him with this weakness because everybody in the family already did it. 
the more people that did the same thing over and over again in your family, the stronger the spirit is. And so for some of you, you getting frustrated because you're like, I don't like poverty. You're frustrated because every car you get, it seems like it's wrecked or you never can pay a car off. Some of you are frustrated because you so badly want to walk in sexual purity and you feel like you can't because you're not just dealing with a demon that's attacking you. You're dealing with the strength of a generational spirit that goes back 10 generations. Somebody been feeding that thing in your family. And every time one of your siblings decided they don't want to talk to each other no more. And we mad at each other. I'm going to go out and talk about my own blood brother and sister like we didn't come out the same womb. What's wrong with us? You're feeding a demon of division. And so now you wonder why your children seem like they can't get along. It's because the demon is attacking your seed because of what was sown generations before now. So we're praying to tell because because these things get muscles and they get strong and, and the uh, the more days you take off from prayer, the more you get body slammed by a demon that was body slamming your daddy. But I don't know about you, uh, every devil that does uh, that came against my bloodline, uh, every devil that body slammed people in my family, it's not gonna have a hold on me. Uh, the more you pray, uh, the bigger you get. Uh, the more you pray. The stronger you get, the more you pray, you'll be like David, taking down Goliath, taking down giants, taking down devils, taking down demons. Now listen, Leviticus 19 and 31, a familiar spirit is a demon that's in your family. That's the first kind of familiar spirit. The second kind of familiar spirit, okay, is familiar spirits through dead people. Samson killed the lion, gave his parents, he was never supposed to touch anything dead, gave his parents the honey out of a dead thing. Some of y'all, you, you trying to find something sweet out of something dead. It's dead. You trying to find life out of a relationship, out of an idea, out of a business that's dead. Let it die and let God build something else in you. He is the God of the start over. I know you put your time in it. I know you've been in that relationship 10 years. I know you gave it your all, but God can start you over. He can give you a fresh start. He can give you a fresh win. He can blow you in the right direction. Nothing you do will be wasted you gotta learn how to let stuff die let it we, we don't let stuff die you got memorials of what you wanted it to be just hang it oh get rid of the bracelet get rid of the clothes get rid of the idea tell people stop bringing them up I don't go to church there no more I don't care what they doing <laughs> Whatever you got to do, you got to let this stuff die. So familiar spirits were when people go to their dead relatives and they, they talk, they, they think they're talking to their dead relatives, but they're actually talking to a spirit. Because once our relatives die, they go on to the other side and they can't come back, not even their spirits. Um, I, I, some of you, I don't know if you ever had this encounter, but I've had a dream before. Because one of the things about the way the enemy attacks you is that he will attack you through your family. Like, like your family member is not your enemy. Do not misinterpret what I'm about to say. But sometimes your family member, your, 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 you, you, you're being an aunt. You don't mean no harm. And you give advice out of you just, I just think this is the right thing to do. And God has already told your nephews, don't go nowhere. This way you're supposed to be plant yourself here. You say, well, you don't mean no harm. You just talk. You just say, well, you know, if you just feel like it's not the place for you, then, you know, just find you a place that works for you. You're just giving random advice. But because there's a family member and you trust her voice, you already heard God, but you were looking for validation to get unseated from a place God told you to stay in. And so sometimes familiar spirits will operate through family, but we don't know we operate in familiar spirits. Sometimes you got to let people check out, have you sought the Lord? I'll fast with you. 
because because of the weight they hold as a family member, they can they can get you up out of a place you're not supposed to be in. They don't mean no harm. They're giving random advice. So through dead people, through families, through animals, one time I had a dream, and I've had many encounters with um, familiar spirits trying to attack my life. So they will try to attack you through your dreams, um, but you gotta be you gotta be mindful that if you have a dream about something familiar, a familiar spirit over certain instances, don't just stop where the dream happened. You gotta be aware that something is coming, some attack is coming. Hear me. So one time I had a dream that I was uh, laying in the bed and I was dreaming. But when when I was laying in the bed, my mother-in-law came through the door. And when she came through the door, because she was my mother-in-law, the face I saw was my mother-in-law. I reached out and let her in my room. This is a dream now. When she sat on the bed, she, she sat on the bed, but by the time she sat on the bed, she, she literally fell over on top of me, and it wasn't my mother-in-law in the dream. It was a demon. So what God was showing me is that a familiar spirit is about to try to, somebody is about to try to come in your life as one thing. But when they get close, they're going to manifest what their real agenda is. And their real agenda is to hold you back. Their real agenda is to hold you down. You got to pay attention to your dreams. So I wasn't in my dreams saying, mm, my mother lost something right about her. No, I was understanding the spiritual implications of how to pray and interpret what God was telling me was coming. And sure enough, three months later, I ran into somebody that I trusted that was trying to hold me back from my future, trying to hold me back from my next level. And because I loved them, I almost let them get me. But I had to obey God even though I loved them. The next type of familiar spirit you deal with is familiar spirits that come through animals. Animals are familiar spirits and they're monitoring spirits. So sometimes when you dream about dogs, cats, birds, this is a sign that some devil is trying to study you to weaken you. Something is studying your mood, your conversation. When you start having dreams about animals, you got to quiet down. You're talking too much. Something is monitoring your life. It's in scripture. Let me give it to you. Something is trying to monitor your life. And so it's monitoring your life to try to attack your life. So if you ever start having dreams about birds and, and all these type of animals, this is a sign that there's a familiar spirit that's trying to attack you. Listen, when you have a dream, never get afraid. Because God will never allow you to see something that your prayers can't cancel. He will never allow you to see it. He's preparing you or your prayers can cancel it. So sometimes when you have dreams about animals, this is a sign that something's trying to monitor your advancement. You're getting ready to transition and go to the next level. The enemy has sent out demons to monitor your life, and they're trying to catch you gossiping, catch you just slipping, not giving from a pure heart, offended. They're looking for evidence to go to the courts and accuse you so that you don't get your advancement. The next one is family or group spirits. These spirits is like, you'll start experiencing rage. You'll start just noticing that you're offended. You're like, I'm just offended. Like, they really bother me. And then that spirit will bring the spirit of anger. And then that spirit will bring the spirit of rage. And then that spirit will bring the spirit of unforgiveness. And then that spirit will bring the spirit of bitterness. So some of you say, I'm trying. I'm trying to forgive. But you're fighting rage. Bitterness, unforgiveness, anger. You're fighting a family of demons. So it's going to require fasting. It's not that you're not doing your best. You're outnumbered and overpowered. So this is when you start feeling hot, when you got to punch a wall, when you start hurling curse words, that's not just a regular spirit of anger. That's rage. But rage can't come unless anger invites it in. Demons work in hierarchy. It's the same with why you cannot get into certain sexual sin. Because this sexual sin leads to doing this. It leads to doing that. And now you got four people with you. And now you're ready to fight over somebody. That is crazy. Because it brings a group with them. The Bible says when a spirit goes out of a man, it comes back, search that house, and brings seven other spirits. Listen, that are 
even more evil than the first one that came out. This is why when God tells you to shut it down, you better shut it down because you might not ever get free. If he tell you to stop, he's trying to protect you from dealing with not just fantasy, but now you got a spirit of lust. Now you open your life up to homosexuality. Now you want to have threesomes. Now you want to go to the strip club. Now you got all these toys and gadgets and cars and houses and flowers and all this stuff that you use it. You got to listen to the Holy Ghost. Because familiar spirits will bring spirits into your life and you, like, I can't get free. Ambition. You will sometimes say, God, I want to be used. And you're content with just working the door. And you're like, I want to be used. And you feel great. And after three months, your fire is gone. Oh, I'm tired of being on this door. They promote everybody else in the ministry. I should be a prophet by now. And so now because I've let the spirit of ambition in, now I let the spirit of selfishness in, now offenses in my life, now I intentionally cause division because now when somebody else is promoted, I'm angry because I'm not content with where God put me. So familiar spirits bring other spirits with it. It's, they come in a family. And then last, the last spirit, familiar spirit I want you to be aware of is patterns and repetitive spirits. Some of you all have dated the same person, just a different face. <laughs> Tell the truth. I end up with, you be like, I end up the same type of girl. Where does the girl come from? Some of you, listen, you end up with the same type of boss. Every job you go to. Because I'm not seeking God. Or you have a, a turnover rate of friendship. Because a familiar spirit will let you go and give you the same thing that you ran from. Just a different face. Let you go. It'll let you go. Okay. Let you go. And they give you the same thing you had. Just a different face. Because guess what? When you're dealing with change and transformation, your deliverance can't be about your comfortability. It has to be about wanting to honor God. And so when you say, I don't want it no more, I'm tired of her embarrassing me, I'm tired of him embarrassing me, and you break up with one person because it's really, you really hadn't given up your desire to want to be in a relationship, you hadn't given that to God, you'll just go get the same thing over and over again. And then act like it's, it's cute. This is why the Bible says that they boasted about shameful things. It, 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 it's one of those familiar spirits that you got to be careful of patterns. If you have a calling on your life, you might be attacked by the same type of spirit every time. Maybe a spirit of fear. It may be an anniversary spirit. That this is the anniversary of a thing that happened in my life. And every time, at the same time, every year, I get sad. It may be a spirit against your advancement. These are the spirits you pray against. Leviticus. And I'm done. Leviticus, I did good. Leviticus 19 and 31 tells us, it says, give no regards to mediums, mediums, or psychics. Mediums or guardian angels or um, spirit guides um, because they get their information from demons. They have no connection to the Holy Ghost. So sometimes you can go to a psychic and a psychic will give you accurate information because of those familiar spirits that's been monitoring your life gave the psychic. And most of the time it be random stuff that they say. It don't, it don't, they, but some of them have a true gift, but they're getting it, their information from demons and familiar spirits. Your life may be, if you look at your life, it may be the result of familiar spirits taking over your life. If you're not advancing and progressing and you're not seeing deliverance, today is your day of freedom. Because now you have identified. It says, do not seek after them to be defiled by them. Familiar spirits will defile you. Familiar spirits will try to make a fool out of you. They'll try to get you in the same predicaments over and over and over again. But as I went before the Lord, and as he began speaking to me about his people, 
He said, tell my people I have given you authority. And I'm not just giving you authority, I have given you power. And because you have power, you now have the wisdom. You now have the understanding and you now have the reasoning to be able to come against every familiar spirit that's been holding up your advancement. I declare in Jesus' name that the believers in this house are going to be able to step on every familiar giant. I don't care if it got your grandmother. I don't care if it got your sister. I don't care who it got in your family. I just want to make a declaration that it ain't going to get me. I declare in Jesus' name that the Lord is about to send arrows to blind every monitoring spirit that's trying to eat up your harvest. I declare in Jesus' name that the believers are about to get some act right. The believers are about to get some anointing. The believers are about to get some wisdom. And you're about to recognize uh, when you're dealing with a wolf in sheep's clothing. Uh, you're about to recognize uh, when you're dealing with a slave uh, acting like they're a son. Uh, you're about to recognize uh, when you're dealing with the same man. It's just a different face. Uh, you're about to recognize uh, that thing that's been attacking your mind. Uh, that's been attacking your body. Uh, that's been attacking your next level. That's been attacking your yes. I uh, declare in Jesus' name you are about to give the Lord a fresh yes in this season. You are to grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm giving the Lord a new yes. Say, neighbor, I'm giving the Lord a new yes. I told him no yesterday. I told him no last week. I told him no last year. But my answer will be yes. My answer, it will be yes. You want me to give it up? My answer is yes. You want me to walk away? My answer is yes. You want me to say bye bye? My answer is yes. You ought to give the Lord a fresh yes. You ought to say Jesus. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Declare in Jesus' name, there's about to be a fresh wind. There's about to be a fresh wind. There's about to be a fresh wind. I'm gonna preach you until you get it. I'm just getting started. Ah, the Lord. I am a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, and I came to make a declaration. What attack my uncle? What attack my brother? It's gonna have to see the Holy Ghost. It's gonna have to see my prayer life. It's gonna have to see my shout. It's gonna have to see my praise. It's gonna have to see my Jesus. It's gonna have to see my fasting. It's gonna have to see my prayers. It's gonna have to see me worship. What attack my mama? We not gonna see it no more. The word says uh, that the Israelites uh, were facing Egypt uh, and the devils they saw uh, on the other side. Uh, the Lord says uh, you will see them no more. Can I preach to you? Uh, can I preach to your situation? Uh, what you saw last year, you won't see no more. The pain from last year, you won't see no more. The poverty from last year, you won't see no more. The grief from last year, you won't see no more. I make a declaration tonight. Open up your mouth in this place and say, Lord, I trust you. Lord, untie me. Untie me from sorrow. Untie me from perversion. Untie me from alcohol. Untie me from bitterness. Untie me from religion. Untie me from gossip. Untie me from homosexuality. Untie me from grief. Untie me from depression. Untie me from anxiety. Untie me from that boy. Untie me from that girl. Untie me from that church. Untie me from that job. Untie me from that money. I want you to open up your mouth. I want you to find you a neighbor. I want you to find a neighbor. Find you a partner. I say the Lord is about to untie us. We've been tied to our own life. 
We've been tired to ambition. We've been tired to fantasy. We've been tired to sorrows. But on today, we're getting untied. I'm coming loose. I'm breaking out. I'm coming unraveled. I'm coming untied. I'm coming untied. You held me down long enough. You held my family down long enough. You held my church down long enough. But on Super Bowl Sunday, I'm about to win the ring. On Super Bowl Sunday, I'm about to get up again. And when I get up, I'm getting up for my children. I'm getting up for my community. I'm getting up for my husband. I'm getting up for my church. I'm getting up. I can't stay here. I'm getting up. Open up your mouth, throw back your head, and give the Lord a praise. If this was a Baptist church, I say the Lord, He carried that cross up the hill called Calvary, and they put Him on the cross, and they hung Him high, and they stretched Him wide. And they beat him up until the earth rocked. They beat him up until the moon turned to blood. They beat him up until water and blood came out his side. They plucked out his beard. And they hit him with a crown of thorns on his head. And he died. They took him off the cross. And they put him in Joseph's tomb. And he lay there. You gotta help me preach. All night Friday. I gotta say it again. Cause this how I got here. He lay there. All night Friday. All Saturday morning. All Saturday morning. All Saturday night. But early.
want to be delivered. I want to be delivered. I can do this. I deserve the best. I deserve to have my right mind. I deserve to be free. He died for my freedom. See, when we preach the cross, we ain't trying to help you. We taking you back to what's going to deliver you. I'm not trying to hype you. I'm letting you know that when he got over all power, you can let them cigarettes go. You can let go of somebody that you think you can't live without. You can let go of your desires and your ambition. I just want to please the Lord. I just want to be in your will. We break every attachment in the name of Jesus. We break every attachment to your past. We break every attachment to your old life. We break every attachment to every fantasy. We break the attachment in the name of Jesus. We break the attachment of what they say. We break every label and we curse it under the power of the blood. We break up. We break the attachment to that. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. We break it. We break it. We break it. The intercessor is rising in you. It cut up a high. It's rising up in the name of Jesus. It cut up a higher mama soul. We break every attachment. We break it in the name of Jesus. You will live and not die. We break every attachment. We break it now in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you. We break it in the name of Jesus. God, I give you my fantasy. I give you my desires. I give it to you today, God. It cut up a higher. I give it to you today, God. As you lay on this floor, surgery is happening. A surgery is happening. You ain't gonna get up the same. You ain't gonna get up the same. A surgery is taking place. One number high, number four, yeah. It cut up a whole number high. Surgeries are happening. Surgeries are happening. It cut up a higher. Whoa, it cut up a whole. I heard the Lord say, I'm breaking you. From the bloodlines attached to your mother. And the Lord says there are bloodlines attached to your mother. And you are about to come in partnership with her to help her fight. And there is a new heat. That's coming upon you. You're going to feel fire randomly. Because this is the burning away of the responsibility that you gave up. The Lord says it is your responsibility to help break the curse. It cut up a higher. Surgeries are happening. Lord, I thank you for cutting me. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Lord, I thank you for cutting me. Lord, I thank you for not letting me lay in the same place. It cut up a hole. I declare in Jesus' name that this baby will be a bloodline generational curse break. We consecrate you to the Lord. And we say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. May you grow up mighty and strong in the Lord. Surgeries are happening. Surgeries are happening. I need you to pray. Come on. Cry out to God. Break it. While I'm on this altar, break it. Break it. I cut the big hole. Break it. I cut the big hole. You will be used in this thing. You will not let people use you. You will not be you. You're going to stop giving your time. You're going to stop giving your money. You're going to stop giving your advice. And the Lord going to consecrate your whole entire being. You will not be you. It cut the big hole. I heard the Lord say, tell us she deserves the best. We break every curse of your past. And I heard the Lord say, don't let bitterness get in your heart. Every man, every woman that ever took advantage of you, bitterness will not be your portion. Lord, I pray for healing. 
healing in your body, healing in your mind, healing in your reasoning. You ask God, why has life had to be this way for me? The Lord said, I'm going to use you. I'm going to use all the turmoil. I'm going to use all the abuse. I'm going to use everything you've been through. And may a generation of young girls, may a generation of women, may a generation of men know God because of what you went through. God, make it all right. All I'm a higher level seeker. Surgeries are happening. Come on, pray. It can never higher. All about God, let it come. God about to get ready to elevate you. How they be cool? All I hear is elevation. Elevation. How they be cool? Let it be higher. Yeah, they be cool. Let it higher. Woo! We bind the spirit of worry and make your gifts come through like never before. We come against everything that wants you to worry and wants you to pray. Your gifts are coming through. Your gifts are coming through. Your gifts receive it. Come on. Your gifts are coming through. Your gifts are coming through. Your gifts are coming through. Are coming through. We find every devil and we declare in Jesus tonight. Your mind is going to be stronger than it's ever been. Your emotions are going to be stronger than they ever be. I declare in Jesus' name, you've been fighting for help. It's on the way. The Lord said, I'm sending help. You've been holding it together. You ain't been thin like you're used to, but help is here. God, I thank you that every spirit of mental illness is being canceled in this atmosphere. We cancel it now in Jesus' name. From your mama's side, from your daddy's side, we come against mental torment and not the cut from this day forward. I plead the blood over your mind. I plead the blood over your brain. I plead the blood over your thoughts. In Jesus' name, we cancel the assignment of hell. We cut the higher. We cancel it, grief. We cancel it. All of the higher. Surgeries are happening. 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 It cut the behind. It cut the behind. We consecrate your mind. We pull your mind out of the past. And we pull your mind into the alignment of the future. We cancel every imagination. We cancel every thought. We put to death everything that God wanted to die. And we say it will no longer live rent free in your head. I speak as your spiritual mother. I speak as an authority in your life. The will of God. And you will not be canceled. The Lord is not canceling your gift. He's not canceling your anointing. We declare in Jesus' name, deliverance is the children's bread. And deliverance is coming to your house. A new dimension of grace upon your mind. We break in that left this mind. Be in you. That's also in Christ Jesus. We take authority today over everything that has attacked your mind. It can never hide. Put them all over. You can't have their hope. You can't have their soul. Come on, pray. Keep going, Lord. Whoa. Not by higher. I heard the Lord say, not by might. Not by power. But by your spirit. May the spirit of the living God. May it come upon you like never before. Where my dancer at? Come on, dance prophetically. Dance the song of the Lord over these people. Come on up here, Rashika. Come on. It can never come never higher. Not by might, but you're about to know the spirit like never before. Not by power. It can never come never higher. It can never say turn never come. Woo! I never high never come up. Surrender it to her. It can never. I feel evangelist on you. I never soul. It can never come never higher. It never 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 for clarity. It's about to replace the confusion. Clarity is about to replace the confusion. But a little confusion there. Not understanding this season. It feels like a blurry season. It feels like you're just walking with no direction. The Lord says, as long as you trust me, you're not going to stumble and fall. You may not can see what God is doing, 
But he said, as long as you trust me, head up a high level cool. That imagination. Hey, while we down here pray. Some of y'all got images stuck in your head. I'm serious about that being broken today. Images that you can't get out your head. Father, come on, pray. Open up your mouth and pray. I don't want nothing or smell to remind me of what you told me to let go of. I don't want to see nothing on social media that can rattle my yes to you. Father, I pray against every image. I pray against every picture. I pray against every thought that keeps popping up in my head. We apply the blood to every pop-up. We apply the blood to every picture in your mind. And I say in Jesus' name, we cancel that picture. We rip that picture up. We rip it up in the name of Jesus. No longer will you see your wedding photos. No longer will you see yourself at an old altar. But I declare in Jesus' name, every picture, every image, may it be canceled in the name of Jesus. Every picture, every image, every picture, every image, every picture, every image, every picture, every image, every image, every picture, every image, every image, every picture, every image, 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 we cancel the assignment of death in the name of Jesus uh, that wants to linger over your life. Uh, you will not think about death. Uh, you will not question your miracle. But the Lord said the miracle is solid. Uh, the miracle is permanent. Uh, and I won't take it back. Uh, we bind the fear of being sick. Uh, we bind the fear of being hospitalized. Uh, we bind the fear of being sick again. I declare in Jesus' name. Oh, it comes up higher. Come against untimely death. Pray that out. Pray that out. We come against untimely death. Pray that out. Sit on the